Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to my CES 2017 coverage from Las Vegas, Nevada. I am here at the Toshiba Suites. I'm actually gonna be looking at uh, some OCZ products right here, because OCZ is of course a Toshiba company. I need to start off by thanking my sponsors for CES 2017, Gigabyte, Deepcool, and of course, Toshiba. Let's start off with a quick rundown of these SSDs that they have. Now these are all available for sale, of course, so you could purchase them right now, but if you're not already familiar, uh, OCZ has the TL100 first off over here on the left side. Uh, this is a SATA 6 gigabit per second drive, 2.5 inch available in 120 and 240 gig capacities. Sequential reads and writes up in the 550 and 530 megabytes per second range, 85,000 and 80,000 IOPS respectively for random reads and random writes. So this is going to be a solid all around drive for you guys. If you're a little on a little bit more of a budget, uh, you could probably get this for a little bit better price. Um, but that is using TLC memory, so triple level cell. Uh, and it also does not have a DRAM cache, so uh, if you know what that means, then that might mean something to you. If you don't, I'm not going to bother to explain it here. This is show coverage. We don't go into that much detail. Next up is the OCZ TR150, also a 2.5-inch little SSD. Looks pretty cool. Uh, nice silver finish on these also, by the way, which uh, I think is nice. My camera will focus, of course. So it should blend in with the system. Some blue accents on there as well. And uh, I, like, uh, I like the OCC design. I think they do a good job with that. The TR150 is, uh, of course, also say to 6 gigabit, gigabit per second, 120, 240, 480, and 960 gigabyte capacities, 550 megabytes per second, and 530 megabytes per second reads and writes, and up to 90,000 IOPS uh, reads, 64,000 IOPS writes, and uh, that one is sort of a step up uh, from the TL100 to the TR150. This one is getting into the high end, at least when it comes to the SATA drives. Uh, this is the OC OCZ VX500 series, uh, which has a little bit more, I don't know, I want to say aggressive design here. It's got a little bit of a texture there on the actual finish for the housing. Uh, and then, of course, well, usually there's a label on the back with the specs and stuff, but that's all right. The specs are right here. Uh, this is, again, of course, 6, six gigabit per second drive, so that's, it is going to be slightly limited by the SATA bus. This is using MLC NAND flash memory, so 2 bits per cell, uh, which is uh, considered by some to be a little bit higher end than the TLC stuff. It can be faster in some, consider in some situations and possibly have more endurance, but uh, you do get 550 megabytes per second reads, 515 megabytes per second writes, 92,000 IOPS on the reads, and 65,000 IOPS on the writes, at least if you're doing 4K stuff, of course. Uh, but then we have this guy over here, which um, is my favorite, at least of this bunch, because it's an NVMe M.2 SSD. Uh, so this is the RD400, and it comes not just with the M.2 SSD itself, but also with a very convenient riser card, so PCI Express. Uh, you can just plug it in there to one of your PCI E expansion slots, provided you haven't done a two-way SLI configuration or something, and you don't have enough slots ready to go. Uh, or if you have an M.2, you can uh, pop this into that. Now they have added a little bit of cooling via a thermal pad there at the bottom to help th keep things cool. Um, but I have been told by OCZ that these drives do not suffer from thermal throttling, throttling except in the very most extreme situations. So you should be fine unless you're sticking it right under a graphics card or something like that. This is PCI Express Gen 3 by 4 NVM NVMe 1.1B compliance. I don't know what that means. I, all I know is that of, of MVME, I'm going to have to look at the standards and what the difference is between them. Uh, comes with that add-in card adapter that's optional. Uh, Toshiba controller, Toshiba MLC NAND flash, available in capacities up to one terabyte, a five-year warranty program. Actually, there's a five-year warranty for uh, this drive as well as the last uh, VX500 drive. The other drives I just showed you have three-year warranties. Um, and then reads 2650 megabytes per second, 2.6 gigs. Per sec, uh, can I say per sec? I don't. I just shortened the word second. That's not really necessary. Up to uh, 1,600 megabytes per second writes, uh, and then random reads in the 230,000 IOP range, uh, and random writes in the 150,000 IOP range. So if you want some fast storage, get like two of these, uh, and and raid them, and that would be cool. But don't do it. Uh, don't do it on the Z270 or Z170 platform. You need. You need uh, X99 for that. Or maybe one of the new AMD, AMD Ryzen chipsets. I don't know why I'm talking about that. I'm just speculating. Here's some Enterprise products that they have on display. Probably out of the range of most of you guys, but still fun to look at. Uh, it's also Velcroed down, so I'm just going to pick the whole thing up. Uh, this is an SSD. It's got a fat heatsink on it, and it's available in capacities up to 4 terabytes. Uh, it's the PX04. And again, probably not going to grab this for like an at-home use situation but hey 
Some of you guys might be into enterprise stuff, so check that out. This is the HK4. It's a SAS SSD uh, capacities in the 200 gig all the way up to 1920 gigabyte range, just shy of two terabytes. Uh, and then a PCI Express version of the PX04, the PX04P, which uh, also, I, I like when SSDs have to have heat sinks on them. That means that they're fast, at least in my experience. Finally here, we have the BG series. This is listed as Client Ultra Mobile MVME, which is, uh, these are designed for OEMs, so um, they're not quite as pretty as far as like the darker uh, PCBs or anything like that. But you have this chip that's been integrated on this, onto this M.2, which is an M.2 2230, which is the shortest M.2 drive that I've ever seen. Uh, and then we also have some other integrations over here. Um, but look at this. Ignore the Velcro on the back, but this is basically just a little, a little chip that is an SSD. Yes, that little chip right there has the SSD controller as well as the NAND integrated. And right now, these are, these, they can make these in, in a 512 gig capacity. So this little chip I'm holding in my hand is not just like a 512 gig NAND chip, it's also the controller, and like everything you'd need for the entire SSD. So you could like take this and solder it directly onto the PCB of like a laptop or something like that, or you can do uh, what they did and drop it onto just like the tiniest little M.2 drive possible, which I thought was pretty cool. They actually have a demo unit of this going, so let's check that out. So here's a demo system they have set up that uh, was sent over by Origin, and that little M.2 drive, just chilling there, right, right down on the bottom right hand corner of the board. Uh, it is, again, so small that like spec wise it doesn't actually match up, so it's kind of floating there, but I think it looks very cute. Um, and just to show you guys who haven't already experienced the difference uh, when it comes to something like load times, this is Doom loading off of that little SSD, um, and it should take just a moment or two because you know, doom load times, they can be very, very time consuming. And now it's ready to go. That was quick. If you guys have ever tried to load doom off of like a, a hard drive or even like a slower SSD, uh, it can take forever. So really cool. I like having the uh, bit availability of really, really tiny SSDs. They're lots of fun. Um, I am going to close off this video though, guys. So if you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. Of course, thanks again to my sponsors, Gigabyte, as well as uh, OCZ to Toshiba, as well as Deepcool. Thanks for watching again, guys. Hit the thumbs up button, and we'll see you next time.